Holy God, illumine the words that we hear this day. Silence in us any voice but your own. And may we hear with joy what you have for us this day. Amen. Around this time of year, social media and young clergy blogs light up with memes and images and stories of sheep. <laughs> One that I particularly like is the, story, is the short video of a lone sheep stuck in a narrow roadside ditch. You see her hind end legs flailing in the air, woolly backside bottoms up, Along comes someone, a shepherd, if you will, and pulls the wayward sheep out of the ditch by her hind leg and sets her free. In that newfound freedom, the, the sheep bounds up and down onto the road and back off the road and onto the road again, so excited to be released from that ditch, only to get 15 yards down the road with another big excited leap to go headfirst into the ditch that she was just in. Can you imagine how frustrating it is to be a shepherd? Such hope, such exuberance with these sheep are dashed by the darn roadside ditch and bollocked up a nice afternoon walk. Our text this morning from the Gospel according to John is part of a longer discourse in the Gospel of John, the I am statements, I am the good shepherd. It reflects sort of the imagery of a good shepherd. A shepherd is one whose voice is known and followed by sheep under care. There, of course, is a problem here. You can see if Jesus is the good shepherd representing the Lord who is our shepherd, then who are we? As American preacher Barbara Brown Taylor suggests, we are the sheep, oh, woolly ones. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they will follow me. There is a bond that exists between sheep and shepherds. The relationship grows and usually the shepherd and the sheep develop some way of communicating that others may not understand. So I'll give you an example of sheep herding, of which I profess that I know nothing about. <laughs> Right? I have no actual skill in sheep herding. But I know how to watch a YouTube video. <laughs> yeah. Cammy Wilson is a sheep herder in Scotland, and Meg, his sheep herding dog. They are a bit of a YouTube sensation on the channel The Sheep Game. Tom Scott is a do it all reporter who joins the sheep game for a day of sheep herding. Cammie and Meg are all ready for the task to get some city boys some help on herding sheep. Well, Cammie and Meg work masterfully together they, to move a small herd around the field for the day. Cammie gives Meg quiet and clear commands from yards away, and the dog responds, lie down. And in Scottish, I guess it sounds like ladoon, ladoon, come by away. And Meg listens to the voice and knows all the commands, even from the quietest whisper across the field. I do. I do. When Tom, the reporter, tries to do the same thing, Meg, the very sh smart sheep herding dog, is in a bind. There is no doubt that Meg knows all these commands. You can see her looking back to the shepherd and even flinching because she knows the command is correct, but she's confused a little because she knows that it's not the right shepherd, right? She knows the right command and she stops because she knows that it's not from the right shepherd. From the tone of Tom's voice or the volume or his horrible attempt at a Scottish accent, Tom cannot get Meg to act upon the commands. And so with the whispered help from Cammie, Meg responds to the herd of sheep and gets them to where they need to go. It took a little trust and a lot of trial and error to get Meg to listen to a new shepherd. The voice of the shepherd is really important. Listening for and listening to the shepherd's voice is even harder. 
The image of the shepherd and the sheep is very central to the narrative that we talk about when we talk about God who has come to us in Jesus Christ. It's what we teach our children to listen to the voice of the shepherd. But it isn't comforting. It's comforting to know and have a familiar voice. A trusted shepherd seeks the welfare of the flock and seeks to lead the flock in God's ways towards God's future. And we can recall that part of the reason that sheep trust the voice of the shepherd is because they know that she will always go first. The sheep know that the shepherd will always experience the journey before they do, so that the sheep have no need to fear being abandoned or purposefully led into danger. The shepherd never leads the sheep to a place that she herself has not been and has not experienced, has not touched, or a place where she has not walked first. Throughout the Gospel of John, and particularly in the preceding chapters, Jesus evokes much discussion concerning Jesus' identity, his origin, his authority, and it results in a division among the people. Regardless of how much time transpires, the debate about Jesus' identity continues. Well, there is some inherent tension between what is God's to do and what is humanity's responsibility. And it hasn't been resolved for over 2,000 years now. So we, all, we won't solve it this morning. However, what we do hear are the promises that create and sustain our faith. The promise of the Good Shepherd to give eternal life. The promise that no one will be able to snatch us out of the Good Shepherd's hand. In our current context, the world in which we live, it is hard to hear the voice of the shepherd, among other voices that clamor for our attention. Many voices claim to speak for God. And in chaos that can be our lives right now, with opinion commentary and talk radio and political campaign ads or or leaked Supreme Court memos and all the responses this past week, we are inundated with noise. And it can be really hard to listen for the whispered voice of God. And as God listens to the cries of God's people who have been long silenced, as God listens and moves toward those who are on the margins, we too must listen to those voices who have been marginalized in all areas of our life and in our community. For women who don't have access to reproductive health care or abortion care, or for whom access is now at risk of being denied, we must listen and believe them and help them. For neighbors in our community who live in food deserts, or don't have access to affordable housing options or healthy affordable housing options, we must listen to them. We must believe them. We who sit in our positions of privilege must listen and act in a way that together we can point to a better future, God's good future for us and the world. And we can be attentive also to that still small voice. It doesn't matter what it is that we do or how we feel or if we doubt or what we accomplish in our lives, that our care and protection comes from one thing, that we are known by God in Jesus Christ. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. The voice of the Good Shepherd is a voice that liberates, never oppresses. So the voice of the Good Shepherd is one that liberates. It doesn't say, do this, and then you can be good enough to be one of my sheep. It doesn't say, you belong, it says, you belong to me already. No one can snatch you out of my care. Secure in this belonging, we are free to live an abundant life 
in which Jesus spoke about earlier in the chapter. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. That is the good gift. And every good gift comes from God. That abundant life of which Jesus speaks is not necessarily about abundance in years or abundance in wealth or status or accomplishments. It is life that is abundant in love of God made known to us in Jesus Christ. A love that overflows to others. It is eternal life because its source is in God who is eternal life. And in Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Amidst all the other voices that evoke fear or make demands on our attention or try to give advice, the voice of the Good Shepherd is a voice to listen to. It is a voice of promise, a voice that calls us by name and claims us as God's own. It is in Jesus the Good Shepherd, who leads us into the future. And that future may be very uncertain. And that future may separate us from time to time. But there will be a t- and there w- may, the future may be uncertain. And that there may, may be tough weeks ahead. But listen to the good news as, as one on the journey with God and the journey that we have in store with God. And we go forward with the assurance that we are not traveling alone, that this good shepherd will never leave us alone, and that when we walk through life's darkest valley and in the shadows, God will be with us, never to abandon us or leave us to our own devices, but that God offers protection and comfort, and somewhat surprisingly, abundant life. Trust that that is every good gift, and every good gift comes from God. Amen.